Hey everyone, TNT Strong here, Weston and Taryn. And we've been doing a lot of sandbag workouts the last year. year or so? Yeah. Uh, and we realized that we have, well, more than four sandbags, but we have four different brands of sandbags. And we wanted to share our thoughts, opinions with you on pros and cons of each of the different brands in the mix um, if you're in the market for a new sandbag. So let's start talking about what's the same with all of them. <laughs> So how all of these sandbag works, they all have uh, internal liner bags. Um, they're all very similar, as you can see Taryn is filling one up right now with sand, except for the 511 bag, slightly different, but the quality on all of these is very good. We haven't had any issues with uh, breakage. Um, they roll up a little bit different depending on the brands, but we haven't had any spilling of sand. And then that internal liner, goes inside kind of the outside of the sandbag that you see they zip up velcro closed all again in slightly different fashions but that's the sandbag so all four of the brands that we do have today have the same kind of layout um, in their handle but are like in the handles and the grips so we've got um, parallel neutral grip grabbing into that farmer's carriage, so it's that single hold. And then also into those side handlebars. Okay, so Taryn's gonna show us all of the sandbags uh, are pretty high quality. They all unzip in slightly different ways. The Go Ruck and the Brute Force are the most similar with just a single uh, zipper down the length of the bag. The 511 is the most different from all the other ones, has a handle that unvelcros, and then the zipper is on kind of the butt end, or I guess the top, with its internal liner. And then the officially heavy sandbag also has Velcro, which is a nice feature, um, but we haven't noticed any extra spillage out of any of the other bags that don't have the Velcro. All of the bags seem like they're built really well, high quality, we haven't had any fraying tears rips none of the zippers have had problems um, everything is lasted and really high quality the one caveat i will say on this is that we have used all of these sandbags on sand we haven't been throwing them around on asphalt or on a concrete gym floor anything like that so your usage on a harder surface that they're falling down onto might make a difference. Okay, so let's go into the benefits and cons of each individual sandbag. So we're gonna start with the Go Ruck. Um, one benefit we do have seen is that each of the internal sandbags, which um, the 120 pound sandbag does come with two, has um, a, anywhere, you know, total capacity of 60 pounds for each of their internal bags. From there, um, it does come with an area for a patch, so this can be labeled for your weight. Um, if you have a home gym and you don't wanna empty your sandbags out each time, it's nice to get maybe a couple of them, so then you can actually um, label each and not have to then, like I said, empty your weight out each time and change off the weight. One con we did find with this, you can kind of see this front view, um, it does hang slightly low. The handles are um, slightly long. With that, when you're going to do any kind of deadlift movement, you can see Wesson doesn't actually get into a full range on his deadlifts. Either grip the sandbag in a different way, which does tax the grip, but just a little bit more if you need. You can also throw it up into more of a good morning um, movement, still trying to be, getting to be able to sit into a little bit more of that further range of motion, that deadlift. Uh, while overall a great sandbag, one of the things that I've noticed that I don't like about this sandbag is the zipper is the shortest, making getting the internal um, sandbags in and out the most difficult. And the zipper goes underneath the neutral grip handles, making it even harder. You just feel like you have to fight the bag a little bit more to get the sandbags in and out. The one thing I really do like about this sandbag is that they come in a big variety of colors. So our recommendation here for uh, this sandbag use would be if you have a commercial gym or you're going to be buying a whole bunch of these and you want uh, a set color, this will match your brand, uh, especially if you don't have to adjust the weight in and out a whole bunch. You just have, you know, 10 or 15 of these bags and a variety of weights. This would be the one I would buy because you can get in cool colors. 
onto official heavy sandbag. So um, one thing about this one, it's small. Um, it's actually, we had the intention to choose this as a small one. They do have a larger size as well. We already have plenty of large size sandbags. So we, like I said, did choose um, to go with a little bit smaller. The cool thing with this one is, is the handles. Um, so they're actually made with probably a little bit more of a high density foam. It almost kind of feels like you have a barbell in your hand, which if you're used to that kind of grip already, that's actually really nice. From there, there's zippers, um, which we already looked at, but again, it has that Velcro, so a little bit more of an extra security. Um, if you do get maybe you know a little rough with your sandbags, you're gonna have that extra security with this one. We recommend if somebody who's maybe already has a couple sandbags and they just want something different, they want unique, it only comes in this color. Um, and again, it is a small business and um, in the UK. All right, our last sandbag, the 511 uh, sandbag. As we mentioned before, the internal liner of this sandbag is different. Um, there's actually two of these, one's already in the bag. But the great thing about these internal liners is basically three sandbags for the price of one. You can do things like kettlebell swings with this or overhead presses because this is lighter and you don't have to adjust the weight all the time. You can just take the bigger bag apart. The one con we have found with the 511 bag is that its shape overall is a little bit squarish, rectangleish. You can see as Taryn zips this bag up, it has a square shape to it. And the big issue with this is if you go to do sandbag cleans, it just feels a little bit awkward catching on the forearms in a square shape versus in a cylindrical shape like all of the other sandbags that we use. But overall, this is a good sandbag. Uh, we really recommend this for any individual that maybe lives in an apartment or a sprinter van. If you need maximum efficiency in your equipment for storage space, this is the one to get because you can empty it out each time or have a variety of weights. Okay, so in closing, overall, I think all of these sandbags are pretty high quality. Um, you're not gonna be sorry if you get any one of them. I think as we highlighted, each of these bags does have slight different pros and cons. So maybe based upon your individual needs and circumstances, there might be one slightly better for you. Um, let us know in the comments below if you would like us to make a sandbag workout video. Like I said, we've been using these a lot the last year. We really like them. Um, and then the one other thing, I know these sandbags aren't cheap. I don't know the price all for all of them off the top of my head because I think we bought them all when they've gone on sale, but I know they're all somewhere around 150 bucks a piece, which is quite a lot for essentially an indestructible duffel bag. So if you would also like us to do another video on how to do a homemade sandbag, let us know in the comments below because we have made several homemade sandbags. They're definitely not as nice as these, but I think you can get it done for about 30 bucks. So if that's something that would be of interest, let us know.